The Penn State Particle Separator is used by dairy farmers and nutritionists around the world to determine the particle size of forages and TMRs. It's a popular tool because it's easy to use in the field or at the feed bunk, and it produces repeatable results from as-fed samples in just a few minutes. Dr. Judd Heinrichs and his graduate students developed this tool and have continued to improve it as our understanding of how particle size influences the health and production of dairy cows has changed. In this video, Dr. Heinrichs will tell you more about the Penn State Particle Separator and how to use it. This is the Penn State Forge Particle Separator. Uh, it's designed very much similar to the ASAPE separator uh, where we can actually calculate mean particle size and in the mathematics has been worked out very well for us to look at average particle size of a feed. Uh, it has uh, screens that are 19 millimeters, 7 millimeters, and 4 millimeters to give us effective fiber, and then a bottom can. Now one of the unique features about this is that the thickness of the screens are proportional to the diameter of the holes, and that's one of the things that, that makes it work. Um, there's also uh, available a screen which is 1.18 millimeters. Uh, that's actually been determined to be the average size of a piece of feed leaving the rumen of a cow. Some people may want to use that. It, it gives us very fine particles and tells us the amount of those fine particles in the feed or TMR. But a lot of people are more concerned about looking at physical effective fiber and that's the, where the 4 millimeter screen comes in. Everything above that uh, is considered physical effective fiber. Everything below that is considered something that's very small, even though uh, its average particle size is greater than 1.18 millimeters. Okay, so what we do with this is it's calibrated with three dry points of material. Uh, we put that silage on here, or in here, it's meant for a, a wet feed. Um, and then what we're going to do is that we shake it 40 times. So we take five shakes, turn it, and we do that eight times. The idea is that you're trying to get all the feed to go back and forth on these screens, allowing anything that's small enough to pass down through. And the, the key thing in terms of shaking it is to give it enough force so that you're a feed or TMR is able to pass back and forth over those holes allowing it to pass down through realizing that you've got feed that, that is trying to pass all the way down into the bottom. So. The only small thing that you have to keep in mind if you happen to have silage is that has a lot of clumps in it. Uh, when you're about halfway through, you need to make sure that they would be all on the top and you need to break those up. In this case, I didn't have any. What we do with this uh, from here on in is that we take what's remaining on each of these screens, we weigh it. Website, you will find a spreadsheet that you download uh, and you can put that the numbers in there and it will plot mean particle size for you and give you a distribution or you can simply add up each of the amounts in the tray and then look at the fraction the proportion that's on the top second tray third tray and, and bottom tray uh, and those are ones where you'll go back to a table and calculate well based on what type of variation this is. Uh, this is a percent that it should be in that and, and is your feed stuff in the range of where it should be. 